Hi, this is Inge coming to you from Inge's Knitting Lab in Denmark. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. Love to see you all. Today I will talk about my finished object since the last video, the stripy robin. And uh, yeah, well, I actually have two FOs, but would you call it a cheat FO if I didn't finalize it since the last video? This has been finalized earlier on, but I thought this piece would be a um, good example to talk about mistakes and are mistakes not piles of gold of new opportunities to learn? I think so. In the whip section, um, I have two whips going on, this cable twitter and a cardigan from Pitted Knit. Um, not so much playing today. Let's see. I have one because I had a re request on a lacy cardigan made in silk and mohair. Um, yeah, and in the fun fact section, let's talk about balls. Because balls are not just balls, I learned recently. There are many names, so let's get hold of these names once and for all. And uh, yeah, in connection with, with, the, with this uh, iron um, cable sweater, let's talk about the best uh, yarn for cables and why and which spun yarn is the best and so on. Just the practical information, if you want to fast forward or move forth and back between sections of interest, then you can use the timestamp the small movie clips below this video to get you there. Yeah, let's get started. This um, FO I'm wearing is called the Armor Stitch Sweater. I wouldn't perhaps call it a vest because there are no sleeves, but it's slightly oversized. And I made it based on a video from Elise Yarns. I have enjoyed looking at their videos because they give you instruction on how to do and, and a short kind of piece of paper with measurements and, and so on. And then you can figure it out with these uh, relatively easy pieces. But what I found interesting with this one was this armor stitch. And if you don't know it, um, it is made by two different size needles. So I had a three and a half millimeter needle and a six millimeter needle. And this creates, and this is made by knitting and purling, but the knitting is um, on the right side here is in the back loop. So it kind of gets this twisted look and armor look. Yeah. And I, I really, I guess her name is Tulin. I don't know if I pronounce it right. Sorry, Turkish people. But but uh, yeah, I think she's very creative and makes a lot of uh, fun stuff <laughs> to, to watch. And I use Flora, whereas uh, Elysians, they use uh, Angora Gold, which is a combination of wool and polyester, I guess. At least some kind of... Um, uh, man-made fiber and this flora this is uh, i guess dk weight and 24 stitches per per 10 centimeters or four inches and it's 65 percent wool and 35 percent alpaca i like this very much it's soft and and warm and it's called beige and it's a mix so that it's not unicolor if you can see there are small yeah many different uh, shades of, of beige in this and I, I like the expression it gets. Okay, but back to the piece. You can see a link here or the picture of the Elise piece. So it's made in two pieces and sewed together um, at the shoulders and the sides. And uh, have a look at the picture. Wow, I like the detail of the shoulder and the sides. However, my piece I made too wide so that I had to kind of destroy the effect here by sewing together. And another thing with this piece was that I found out that when, 
when with with my bust size it it is uh, less flattering with this uh, drop sleeve um, so i guess it's better if i i find it better if i have a set in sleeve and you can see the contour of the seam here it seems as if yeah the illusion of a of a smaller size breast so i like this more so i never for myself make these drop shoulder uh, constructions uh, anymore but this was a trial and uh, as i said in the intro you can learn a lot about your mistakes and if you re reflect and uh, think about what what was not so good and what is good uh, then yeah you can improve but uh, yeah, for the body sizes, I, I think this is uh, yeah, a very nice piece. Okay, enough about the armor stitch vest. I'm just looking at my notes if I forgot to say something. Let's move on. Let's get hold of the names on how to curl up or present your yarn once and for all. This one, very common one, is called a bullet skein. I have called it a ball, but no. This is a ball. You ball it up and it looks like a ball. And you can also cake it up, then it's a cake. And before the cake, you have a hank. This is a hank. Hi, cat. And this is when you, you twist. You saw the cat again? I don't know if you saw it before. This Maine Coon cat of my daughter. Yeah, hi. They are very talkative. Okay, this was, um, you twist it and it becomes a, a twisted hang. Yeah, picture this, twisted hang. And uh, if you just do like this, it's a folded hang. And then I'm just looking at my notes. You have some called the pull skein. Um, I've seen these made from... Hi. Hi, Kira. What are you saying? You need a hug? Yeah. Okay. Where were we? Yeah, then the donut balls. They are also often made just like this dog's tweed I use for the capering. And then we have cones. Yeah, makes sense to call them cones. Cat. That's like she is. She wants to be the center of attention. And she visits when my daughter is at school or work. And she needs company, and that's nice. Yeah, hi. These Maine Coon cats, they have very long bodies and very long hair. And yeah, a social pet. I'm not skilled in, in cat races, but uh, I only know this. This one and forest cats. How, oh, Kida? Can you perhaps uh, move a bit? No, she can't. She's still here in my lap. If it's okay by you, it's okay by me. Yeah. I guess now we know all about how to present the yarn. So let me see if I can remember. I guess the hardest one would be this bullet gain. I don't know why, because I would probably call it a ball. Okay, moving on. This is the finished object I call the stripey robin. I showed you the whip in the last video where I had started. And then now it's finalized. It was a very fast knit as I had expected. And I made this from the yarn I was fiddling with before this 
Hank and Twisted Hank, which I caked up or balled up. Yeah, <laughs> I am learning. Okay, fun aside. But uh, this one, uh, yeah, the stripes, I guess, in order to make it look kind of harmonious, I guess the background color is slightly wider or double as wide as as these shifting color stripes. I find this, yeah, harmonic to the eye. And uh, more mistakes. Yeah, I can say I had gone down here on, the, do you call it yoga, yoga on a raglan sweater? But before I reached the body part, I recognized that I had forgotten to do um, short rows to raise the neck. So I thought, well, okay, I don't want to rip all back. I just pick up stitches and make it afterwards. But then, you know, usually you would go and raise the back using stitches also here on the shoulder. But you see, I had finalized this raglan, so I should I start new raglan here or what? So I didn't. So I only raised the neck in between. Um, yeah, before the raglan on the back here. And of course uh, you can see it, but I guess it's okay. It's okay. Uh, and then I used, uh, I wanted to have the vision of these stripes being equally wide. So I just made uh, the, the ribbing here and closed up with Italian uh, cast off. Um, yeah, <laughs> I still have the cat on my lap. Um, yeah, and I didn't weave in all the ends for you to see that I carried over the white yarn because it was a short distance, but the other ones I cut. So now I have quite a job on uh, weaving in these ends because it was important to me that kind of you don't see where you shift the row for a new color. And I also use um, mm, provisional cast on under the arm because I find that I don't want the extra bulk when you pick up stitches uh, from, from a cast on here. So I do that for every sweater now and I think it looks nice, you can't see it, and uh, it's so easy. So I just have the crochet hook and I hook uh, a chain and then use the chain to do the provisional cast on. So I just steamed it, I haven't washed this one because the yarn I used is natural yarn from sheep, it's not colored, it's the sheep color and uh, it is uh, from Merino sheep and uh, phenol with the three colors so 75 I guess percent black and 25 percent white so she blends the the color of the fleece from her sheep to create the different natural colors so it's all over natural color um, and natural wool ready for forest kindergarten so that's nice yeah the whip project on my needles is this champagne cardigan from petit knit so i i'm just in the middle of i finished the short rows in the back and i'm doing the raglan increases and it's all going back and forth here. Uh, so I guess she makes three stitches as a raglan. It's a nice, nice detail. And I would expect that it won't fall off the, the shoulders. Um, yeah, and I guess there will be this uh, double uh, band, button band. Uh, yeah, maybe I can show you here if 
you by some reason i don't know why the movie you're looking at is too uh, interesting and you forget to make an increase and you go two rows back and catch up to make it you can see it the stitch gets a, a bit bit smaller you could see it here but yeah this time i was a bit too lazy to go more rows back and and uh, redo i thought well yeah it is handmade and i can do i can do uh, a bit of you know, adjusting uh, on the back side afterwards and you will hardly hardly see it so that's what i sometimes do and i also have the hook nearby if i'm drop a stitch and have to catch it again yeah then there's the issue about uh, if you are not having the same tension of knits and pearls and uh, i learned that when making uh, a sweater the tall cardigan with unspun yarn i covered that in another video and then I went down an easel size on, on the pearl side, but this time I have kept the same needle socks and I think it's okay even. Tension. And you can see kind of a kind of a stripey effect. It's because again this Noah from drops is a mix, so it's a, I wouldn't call it speckle, but they're different. Mm, changing colors of blue i guess this is called jeans blue drops and drops uh drops um north it's all say a dk weight yarn for 24 stitches per four inches or 10 centimeters and uh, it's 45 percent alpaca 30 percent polyamide and 25 percent wool i had this in my stash and i thought well this might be uh, with a polyamide content, uh, man-made fiber. It would be very durable and maybe not uh, so pilling, but you can see here the alpaca, can you see it? Poking out the fiber. So it is a bit, I also thought about having um, more hair and silk in it, but actually I would like something without this fuzziness. I have more sweaters with this fuss so yeah and as usual you've heard me saying it before so now it becomes yeah repetition but petite knit uh, patterns are easy to understand easy to read and easy to knit so and this is also true for this champagne cardigan um Moving on to the other knit, where you need to keep track of, of the stitches. Yesterday, I I, uh, I attended a knitting community here and we have, uh, there are many people, 30, 40 people. And um, we were uh, sitting in this yarn shop and talking and so on. And uh, I had to go to this one from this one because there was too much talking for me to uh, keep track of where I was. But uh, let me talk about this one. It's, uh, uh, yeah, cable sweater. And uh, as I covered in the last uh, episode, I get inspiration from Alice Darmor, Aaron Knitting, from these Japanese knitting books. These are in Danish, but you can have them, I guess, in almost any language or many languages at least. I have both of them and I actually also have one Japanese crochet. Um, and then I figure out um, the size and I wanted to make this a bit oversized for a two and a half years old so he can use it for a year or two. So I measure the width and then when I have to figure out where and how to place the cables, I, I look for harmony in the eye. Uh, 
it's an, a subjective thing, of course, but to me, it's like the centerpiece is half of the width, and then you have one fourth at the sides to do something else. And if I would do another size, maybe I would add a bit more of the must stitch out here. If, if it had to be bigger, if it had to be much smaller, I would subtract one of these, uh, one of these squares here. But the inspiration of, of this one, uh, you can see on the link in the picture beside me, because I look a lot at, on these videos on how to do things, and they give me inspiration for patterns. And uh, I politely lend this for my sweaters. And this kind of uh, braided uh, cable I had from, from Alice Darmor, and the must stitch is must stitch. So it's just how you divide it. And this time I made a, a knit stitch in the side seam to pretend and and give it more um, yeah, structure in the side so that it won't twist around. You can already see it now that it actually doesn't move here. And I have now come to the point for the sleeve. So what I will do is for, for my grandson, I will make a drop sleeve. So now I use the Norwegian technique. I will add in a few stitches so that I can stick, so I continue up here until I have to do uh, the shaping of the neckline in the front and the back. And then I have to go forth and back for, for, yeah, for the shoulder part. It's no problem actually, because uh, when you do the cabling and crossing over here, it's it's only done in the in the right side of the fabric. So, so, yeah. But it's nice and easy to go in a in a round. Yeah. What's more to say about it? Yes, the drop sleeve and yeah, yeah. You can see also here a link uh, to one other knitter who taught me by this video on how to start with the I-cord, an I-cord cast on, so then when using the I-cord, you have the stitches right away to go in the round. And I thought, mm, I tried with ripping, but much is going on here, so I wanted calmness, calmness, can you say that, for the eye here. And I would like this feeling of calmness also around the neck and, and around the, yeah. The wrist so yeah um maybe i forgot to tell you about the yarn it's oh it's obviously a drop stay today it wasn't planned like this but it is because this has been sitting in my stash and maybe i hold it a bit when it was on sale so this is drops soft tweed and again it's mixed so that you can see variegating nips and what do you call it fleece in in the yarn i like this effect and um, it's super final pack and mirror in the wool in the percentages of 50 percent wool 25 percent alpaca and 25 percent viscose viscose is a plant yarn with a bit of chemistry but it comes from plant fibers so you can breathe in this one and i thought this would be a very nice transitional piece from summer to fall starting in kindergarten and there are endless of possibilities you can change out this part to do be something else or yeah you know cables is yeah zillions of possibilities yeah but what do you think? I think it pops wonderfully with this yarn. So I'm content, I'm content. But it is like this when you do cables, you it, it takes a bit more yarn, but I'm only on the second ball now. So I think maybe four balls or three and a half ball for this one. So it's rather affordable for, um, yeah, we don't call him a baby anymore. He's a toddler, wouldn't you say? 
and it was so nice this morning. You know, his light voice, Grandma, the Momo. And he was running to our bedroom and waking us up with hugs and kisses and fun and laughs. It's, yeah, I can tell you, this is the best start of a day when he comes uh, waking us up before he's going to his uh, uh, what's daycare uh, center. So, yeah, and now the cat wants some company. So let's see, I will tend to her right now. Yeah. So which is the best yarn type to use for cables? And which type of yarn gives you the best stitch definition? There are actually more things to consider when you want your stitch definition and your cables and structure to pop out the most, so to speak, uh, and stand very sharp and crisp on your knitwear. For one, when you knit cables, you use more yarn and hence the garment gets heavier compared to a a non-structured or non-cabled sweater. So you would want it to be lighter. And the way you can do this is to look at how the yarn is spun, because you have woolen spun yarn and you have worsted spun yarn. And the difference is that the, the woolen spun yarn is um, leaving the fibers in random order so you spin it and leave the fibers go wherever they want. And this leaves you with a, a fluff yarn, which catches the air and is very light. Compared to the worsted spun yarn, where you direct the fibers so that you get a smooth surface, but also a more compact yarn. So in the ideal world, the woolen spun yarn would be the better. And, and when I say wool and spun, of course you can use other types of yarn than wool to make uh, cables. You can also use um, uh, uh, plant fiber yarns, but again, these would uh, feel and be heavier than wool and spun yarns. Okay, but again, which other parameter could you use uh, for the structure to pop out. Then we talk about not the spinning method, being the woolen or worsted, but the plying of the yarn. And uh, knitters seem to agree that three plied yarn would be the preferable yarn for doing cables. And uh, the, the three plied yarn is made by three strands of yarn, which are twisted together. And uh, how come not two plied yarn or one plied yarn? And without digging too deep in, in yarn uh, science or yarn tech, um, it's kind of like when you ply them together, when you have the three strands, it looks like when you do a cross section, it looks like a round surface and the roundness of, of the plied together yarn will pop out more than when you have two plied which would look a bit more oval when you do a cross section. That's um, kind of what I learned. So, yeah. So airy and fluffy with a woolen spun and three plied uh, woolen yarn, that would do the trick. And uh, which yarn weight would you prefer? Um, Neither seem to agree that Aran weight or deco weight yarn would be preferable. So Aran is from 16 to 20 stitches um, and DK weight is 21 to 24 stitches per four inches or 10 centimeters. So yeah, in that area. And uh, this one, how many stitches do I have? I think I have 21. 21 stitches, yes, 21 stitches here. So this would would uh, be according to ideal uh, well. However, this is only a two-plied yarn, but I don't know if it's the twist or what, but don't you think this is popping out? I think so, so nicely. 
and it's it's uh, yeah I am I'm content with this yarn for for this purpose and I'm a bit curious to learn during wear how the alpaca content of this will if it will make it um, a longer or as as uh, alpaca may do or due to the structure it will still keep its shape let's see enough about yarn for cables the last thing to show you today was the request from my girlfriend she has become a grandmother and she would like to knit a cardigan for her granddaughter and she would like to do it in mohair and silk two threads and uh, she asked me uh, or sent a picture of of something like it and i thought well this is the herringbone stitch so and i searched if i could find a, a, a pattern for her so it was a just do it but i couldn't find a herringbone cardigan for baby uh, if you can please um, slip me a reference or or, or comment because it would be, of course, much easier than for me to make the pattern. But otherwise, uh, this is the, can you see it? The herringbone stitch in, uh, in mohair. And actually, I, I learned that when doing lace, it's actually good to, to do it in, in silk and mohair and uh, other furry <laughs> or fuzzy yarns. So... I will give it a go. It will be a simple uh, raglan cardigan uh, and ribbing at top and, and on the hem. So, yeah. I guess that was all of knitting for today. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let's see you at the next video. Have a nice fall out there. And... A lot of fun with your transitional knitting of whichever project is going on. So, Roger and over from English Knitting Lab. Color me happy. Bye bye.